Hi there. Today we're going to discuss the topic of entities. My name is David Von Thennen, and I'm going to be your guide today. For the agenda today, we will review the basics of entities and cover some things you need to know to utilize them effectively. Then we'll discuss various real-world use cases. Next, we will take the platform capabilities and use them in a real-world example. Then we'll do a deep dive and cover some APIs as they relate to entities. Finally, we'll cover how-tos, as in how to build applications and solutions using our SDKs, plus have tutorials and some more resources you can take a look at. So let's talk about entities. What are they? And more importantly, why do we care about them? So the too long didn't read explanation of an entity is typically a person, place, or thing. The most common use case for entity detection is privacy and redaction purposes. These are things like personal identifiable information, payment credit card industry related items, or personal health information. Some common examples of personal identifiable information are things like name, age, birthday, social security number, and driver's license. For payment card industry related items, you have bank accounts, routing numbers, credit cards, and CVV numbers. For personal health information, you have health conditions and injuries. And some of the more general entities are URLs, file names, and dates. You can find a list of our out-of-the-box supported entities on the Symbol platform by using the link provided. The main purpose for entity detection is for recognition. In order to do anything, we first need to be able to recognize these common entities. Higher level order entities are things like a person's name, corporation or business name, a person's gender, or attributes like hair color. Other points of identification include religious affiliation, political, and spiritual. Collectively, these things can possibly be used to identify an individual in a meeting or in an email thread. Some other things include birthdays, anniversaries, specific events, days, months, and times. As an example of someone who is celebrating Noruz, you might be able to safely say that the individual is Persian of Iranian descent. Things like blood type or medical conditions or medications they are taking could be used to identify an individual. Things like blood type or medical conditions or medications they are taking could be used to identify an individual. Things like cities, states, can be used to narrow down an individual's identity, or even landmarks. If I say that I see the Queen Mary every day, you could probably conclude that I live in Long Beach, California. Then there are digital-related items like IP addresses and URLs, which could be used to exactly pinpoint an individual's identity. pre can entities provided by the Symbol platform are great, but there are probably entities that are specific to your business or domain that you operate in. To handle those use cases, the platform allows you to create your own custom entities by providing a type, subtype, and values that describe your custom entity. This gives you the ability to define your own personal identifiable information, sensitive identifiers, or items of interest. More importantly, this functionality can be used to receive notifications for person, places, things of interest for your business when these custom entities are mentioned. One thing I wanted to highlight is the type subtype capabilities. An example of a type subtype could be car versus truck versus SUV, and then have subtypes of like Ford versus Honda with values of F-150 and Civic. There's a lot of opportunities to classify or categorize your entities into higher level constructs to use these notifications for specific things where the type or subtype is actually what you want to receive the notification for. Now that we have a good understanding about what entities are, let's talk about some very specific use cases that involve using them. In the asynchronous use case, entity recognition is primarily used for three things. One is for redaction or removing private data from the transcription, generating metadata around what entities are discussed in a given conversation for the means of cross-referencing between conversations, and then also for auditing and verification purposes. The real-time streaming use cases are a little bit more interesting. They include all of the things that I've mentioned above in the asynchronous case, but they also include real-time notifications so that if an entity is discussed or talked about, you'll get a notification which could be used to trigger a given action. As a reminder, take advantage of the hierarchical structure that custom entities support. This is using the higher level type or subtype containers in order to do conversational insight related operations. Finally, having the capability of looking at historical relevance for entities. This is looking at past instances in which specific entities or categories or subcategories have been mentioned in other conversations. And the last big common use case is regulatory compliance. 
This is being able to identify and also redact certain sensitive or private information that you might not want to have in a transcript, in an application log, transaction log, and etc. We mentioned a bunch of these before, like PCI, HIPAA, GDPR, and it should be noted that there are many different regulatory compliance rules and policies that are indicative of other countries like the United States, Canada, India, and so on. Now, let's talk about how we can apply entities on the Symbol platform to specific real-world examples. Since entity recognition is all about identification and recognition of certain person, places, things, characteristics, traits, and attributes, I thought it would be interesting to play a little game of identification or name this person. So I'm going to describe certain properties or characteristics of this given individual, and we're going to try to guess who they are. The first thing we're going to mention about this person is their family. The father's name is George, and their mother's name is Lorraine. This person has two siblings, one is Dave and the other is Linda. This person has two known acquaintances, one by the name of Jennifer Parker and the other one of Dr. Emmett Brown. This person drives a raised pickup truck and lives in Hill Valley, California. This person graduated Hill Valley High in 1985 and is the known musician who plays the guitar for a band called The Pinheads. Who is this person? So the person I'm describing is obviously fictional and it's Marty McFly from Back to the Future. The point is we can uncover someone's identity through tangentially related facts and entities. I actually ended up running this description of what I said through the Symbol platform using the real-time streaming API, and it recognized all of the entities you think, like a person's name, like George and Lorraine, Hill Valley, California as a location. We're actually gonna take a look at this in the demo later. So you can obtain a lot of information in the form of entity detection, and that's why this feature is very important, both in terms of features like redaction, but also for things where you want to identify, clarify, and add more detail or nuance around. So one other significant feature that I've already mentioned a few times now is the ability to redact stuff from transcripts. And as we discussed earlier, this is removing personal identifiable information, personal health information, and the like. But in order to redact, you need to be able to recognize and identify these things. Instead of talking about this more in detail, there's actually already another training video in this series that focuses on redaction. I've linked to it here. I definitely encourage you to take a look as it has a bunch of information relating to the capabilities for redaction. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's go ahead and do a deep dive and look at some of the APIs relating to entities. The asynchronous API is a four-step process. First, you log in. Then you either post or link out to a video or audio file to process. Then you poll for job status completion. Finally, you call the Get Entities API to obtain the list of entities contained within a given conversation. This will list out all of the entities in a given video, audio, or text conversation. As I previously mentioned, you have the ability to create your own custom entities. This is what the Create function looks like for creating a custom entity. The important thing to note in this custom entity is that the category custom is fixed and not changeable. There is a type and subtype that you can specify as well as the actual values for this entity. Again, as an example, you could have a car versus truck as the type, the subtype could be Ford versus Honda, and the values could be F-150 or Civic. With all REST APIs that have a CRUD interface, you have the ability to update your custom entities. This is done by specifying the entity ID in the URL, and then being able to change the type, subtype, and values for that given entity. And if you have a create, then you need to have a delete. So there's a delete API where you specify the entity ID to delete and remove the entity from being recognized. In the real-time use case using the WebSocket interface, this is what an entity event notification looks like from the symbol platform. This is also very similar to what the asynchronous API looks like, but we're going to just take a look at the real-time as an example. Some fields to take note of are the detected value, the message ID where the entity originated from, and finally the category type and subtype for the entity. So for the demo, we're going to take a look at obtaining entities using the JavaScript SDK for asynchronous API calls and the Go SDK for performing real-time WebSocket streaming. Let's go ahead and take a look at that now. For the demo, we're going to first take a look at the Getting Started Samples repo. And this contains a lot of our JavaScript and Node-related examples. Uh, we're going to extract from a default or provided conversation at the root of the repo, we have an MP3 file, which is, contains a, a recording of a tech support call. We're going to extract all of the entities from that conversation. And to do that in the getting started samples repo, we have a helper script at the root of the repo. It's run example SH. 
because we're uploading this conversation, this MP3 file to the symbol platform, we are going to do an async upload. And then because we want to extract all of the entities out of this conversation, we're just going to grab all of the entities. From here, we're going to upload that new phone call.mp3 file to the symbol platform. First, we're like logging in, getting the session cookie, then uploading the file. And from there, we're going to get the job ID to pull for completion of the analysis by the symbol platform for all the insights. And once that is complete, we will see all of the entities that had been generated based on this conversation, this MP3 file. And you can see here it's finished. You can see all of the entities that were obtained from this MP3 file. So we have the first one, which is PII, which is personal identifiable information. We have a category of managed, which is ones that we provide. PII are entities that we provide by default. The first subtype is occupation and the detected value is internet service technician. And then the second one, we have time. So uh, time was identified. We have, it's in the category managed. So these are things that the symbol platform is by default looking for. The detected value is 5 p.m. And you can also see here in both examples, the text that generated this particular entity insight. So it's, I will finish my work by 5 p.m. So you can send a technician after that. Next, I wanted to do something cool. We're going to use the streaming API in the Go SDK. So we're going to use a example streaming client um, contained within that repo. To run the streaming client, it's pretty simple. We go to the root of the repo and go to examples streaming. And to run the example, you just need to, you just need to type go run uh, CMD, which basically we're going to use the microphone on my laptop. And then we're going to take that audio stream and we're going to use WebSockets to connect to the symbol platform and we're going to get the insights back. So for this demo, we're, I'm going to take the same thing that I did in the presentation, which is describe the who am I. And in the who am I, where I was describing Marty McFly, a fictional character, we're going to give the same description, the same things, the same sentences and the same clues to identify Marty McFly in the presentation and see what entities were extracted out of that. So let's go ahead and run here. The first thing we're going to talk about is the person's family. The father's name is George and the mother's name is Lorraine. This person has two siblings. One is Dave and the other is Linda. This person has two known acquaintances, one by the name of Jennifer Parker and the other one, Dr. Emmett Brown. This person drives a raised pickup truck and lives in Hill Valley, California. This person graduated Hill Valley High in 1985 and is a known musician who plays the guitar for a band called The Pinheads. So if I stop it right here, we can see a bunch of insights that were derived from the description of Marty McFly. And if we scroll to the top here where we have the conversation start, you can see the entities that were detected, right? The first one we described was Marty McFly's parents, so George and Lorraine. So these are the two names that it had pulled out of the description. And you can see that they are personal identifiable information. The subtype is person's name, and we have Lorraine and George. The next one, I described Marty McFly's siblings. So again, those are personal identifiable information. They are people's names. They are Linda and Dave as his uh, brother and sister. And the next thing I described was his known acquaintances. From here, you can see personal identifiable information, the person's name, Emmett Brown and Jennifer Parker are his known associates. And what's really interesting here is we have another piece of personal identifiable information, which is occupation, which is doctor. So Dr. Emmett Brown. So that's another piece of personal identifiable information obtained in that sentence. And there's another one. So we have another entity that was discovered. Um, this one's personal identifiable information, location, and it's Hill Valley, California, even though it's a fictitious, well, 
hopefully might be a fictitious city within California. It, you know, the symbol platform identifies it as a city and a state. So we have the location here. And then another entity that was discussed and in this conversation was, uh, we have two that were now discovered in the next description of, you know, Marty McFly. We have personal identifiable information. We have organizations. So we have Hill Valley High, which is the high school that he attended. And then interesting, we also have the Pinheads, which is the group of the band that he plays for. So the uh, symbol platform was able to correctly identify this is an organization within this description. And then we also, because we mentioned a date, we have a, a, another entity, which is a general, which is a date interval, and it recognized the date of 1985, right? Which is the year that Marty McFly graduated in Back to the Future. And then if we continue to scroll down, we have another entity that's detected, which is a personal identifiable information occupation. And I mentioned that Marty McFly is a musician and plays in a band, so it identified occupation musician. So it's pretty cool to see this in, happening in real time. And this is what I had used in, as the example of a way to use identities uh, in a very interesting way, which is um, basically name this person. And so you can see how entities um, get related to you know, descriptions, things that are of interest in a conversation. Let's go ahead and get back to the presentation. The last thing I want to take a look at is the how to's. We'll be taking a look at the SDKs, tutorials, and finally offer up some resources for people who are looking to dive deeper into code. For a recap on the how to's, you can recreate everything done in this demo using the information contained on the slide. This will enable you to run the entities in JavaScript and do real time entity identification with the Go SDK. Here are some additional resources the symbol AI documentation and the API Explorer, which offers a very excellent way without code to explore the platform's different capabilities. As always, you can reach us in our Slack community if you have any questions. Go ahead and drop me a DM to talk about anything you saw in this presentation. Thank you for watching this presentation. Again, my name is David Von Thennen. If you want to discuss anything further, you can reach me on my socials at dvonthennen, on Twitter and LinkedIn, also on my personal blog, davidvonthennen.com. Thanks again for watching.